Now let's talk about carcinoma esophagus. The most common types of esophageal carcinoma is squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. Now these are the potential questions that we can get in our exams that the most common type in the world is squamous cell carcinoma. But uh, whereas we can see that adenocarcinoma it is the most common type in the US. Now what is the distribution of squamous cell carcinoma? The squamous cell carcinoma can be found in the upper one third of the esophagus or middle one third or in the lower third. You can see that most commonly it is uh, found in the middle one third of the esophagus which accounts for almost 60% of the cases. And next is the lower one third which accounts for 30% of the cases and very rarely it affects the upper one third of the esophagus. You can see that adenocarcinoma is mostly located in the lower third of the esophagus. And now again we will revise it. The most common type of esophageal carcinoma in the world is squamous cell carcinoma. And the most common site of esophageal carcinoma is the middle one third. The most common site for adenocarcinoma is the lower one third. Now what are the risk factors for carcinoma esophagus? For adenocarcinoma, uh, we have risk factors like chronic gastric reflux, barrett esophagus, obesity, smoking. We can see that uh, alcohol is not a predisposing factor for adenocarcinoma whereas alcohol is uh, associated with squamous cell carcinoma. Then again smoking is there and uh, mucosal damage uh, which can be uh, from long term ingestion of hot liquids or caustic ingestion. Now other risk factors include um, radiation induced and caustic stricture formations, chronic achalasia, ingested carcinogens like nitrates, nitrides and nitrosamines, smoked opioids uh, which are the fungal toxins present in the pickled vegetable. Then there is a Plummer Wilson Patterson Kelly syndrome, which comprises of a triad in which there is esophageal web glossitis and iron deficiency. And then there is tylosis, palmaris plantaris, which is a congenital hyperkeratotic disease of the palms and soul. And the esophageal cancer it is also associated with human papilloma virus infection. Now bulimia, how bulimia causes squamous cell carcinoma. In bulimia, there is repeated micro trauma due to vomiting, which may contribute to the transformation uh, of the esophageal tissue to malignancy. Now, esophageal diverticulum is also a risk factor for the development of uh, esophageal carcinoma. What are the clinical features? It is more common in males. Again, it is a potential question that you can see. It is more common in males. And the most important, most common clinical feature that we have is dysphagia. And the next one that we can have is weight loss. Now the dysphagia, it's uh, present late uh, during the course of the disease. It occurs when about two thirds of the esophageal lumen get obstructed. Why does that happen? Because you know that esophagus, esophagus is elastic in nature and until it is obstructed by two-thirds of the lumen, it will not cause dysphagia. And uh, um, the dysphagia, it is progressive in nature. Initially, 
for solids and then later on for liquids as well. When we have the early disease, the patient may be asymptomatic or um, he may mimic symptoms of GERD. Other symptoms include coughing, choking and aspiration from a tracheoesophageal fistula. Here again it is a potential qu uh, question. These symptoms like coughing and choking we will see that in advanced cases only when there is formation of a tracheoesophageal fistula. Again there can be hoarseness of voice and vocal cord paralysis from direct invasion into the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Again it is a uh, it is seen in advanced cases and it is also a potential question that we can get. Now what are the investigation for carcinoma esophagus? The barium swallow it is the first investigation of choice. What we see in a barium swallow x-ray we will see that there will be narrowing of the lumen here you can see the in the picture that there is narrowing of the esophageal lumen and uh, there will be mucosal irregularity seen over here and uh, this is what we call it shouldering and there will be proximal dilatation of the esophagus and in the distal esophagus we will see a rat tail filling defect and a shouldering edge. Now the other investigation, the investigation that we do to confirm the malignancy is endoscopic guided biopsy and the investigation for staging includes CCT contrast enhanced uh, CT but the investigation of choice to assess the T stage of the cancer and for to see any lymph node metastasis is endoscopic ultrasound not and not CECT. Now we will study about the staging of carcinoma esophagus. Uh, TIS or we can say that carcinoma in situ. Here there is a high grade dis but there is no breach in the basement membrane. Now T1, T1 is tumor invading lamina propria, muscularis mucosa or submucosa. It is further divided into T1A and T1B. T1A when the tumor invades the lamina propria or the muscularis mucosa and T1B when the tumor invades the submucosa and uh, T2, here you can see that T2 in T2 that uh, T2 there is invasion of the muscularis propria and in T3 there is there is invasion of the adventitia. You can see that esophagus consists normally of only three layers mucosa, submucosa and muscularis there is no serosa so without the serosa covering the esophageal cancer rapidly infiltrate through the muscular wall into the surrounding structure and which lead to, to T4 that uh, the tumor invades the adjacent structure and it is further divided into T4A and T4B T4A is a resectable tumor when the tumor invades the pleura pericardium or diaphragm and T4B is uh, we have unresectable tumor when the tumor invades the structures like aorta and the vertebral body and trachea. We can study this using a simplified version of the diagram that I have here. Here we have the simplified version that help to study it better 
we have T1. You can see that T1 when the tumor invade T when the uh, tumor invade the lamina propria or the muscularis propria this is known as the T1A and T1B when it invade the submucosa layer now the T2 in T2 it invade you see there it invade the muscularis mucosa and T3 of course it it invade the adventitia now the lymph node metastasis we have uh, nx when uh, the regional lymph node cannot be assessed n0 when the lymph node there is no lymph node involvement n1 where is one two two lymph node involvement and two when there is three to six lymph node involvement and three when there is more than seven lymph node involvement m0 when there is no metastasis and m1 when there is distance metastasis now what are the sites for distance metastasis the most common site of a metastasis is liver you uh, should remember this because it is a potential question that the most common site of metastasis is liver followed by lung followed by bone now what is the treatment modality for uh, carcinoma esophagus for uh, TIS or high grade dysplasia we can opt for endoscopic mucosal resection here you see that it is a potential question so uh, pay attention to it it is the endoscopically removed mucosa now for localized esophagus esophageal carcinoma which include t1 t2 and t3 in t1 cases we will go for vagus sparing a transhital minimally invasive esophagotomy with limited lymph node you hear the limited lymph node dissection in case of t2 and t3 we will uh, give new adjuvant chemo radiation plus surgery what is new adjuvant chemo radiation the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy which is given before going for surgery is known as the neoadjuvant chemo radiation therapy what we gonna do in advanced disease um, there is uh, definitely no role of surgery because in T4 there is you can see that there is a involvement of the adjacent structure which cannot be removed so it uh, the treatment modality is um, mainly we give the palliative treatment which include chemo radiation for metastatic disease again we go for palliative treatment and give definitive chemotherapy and for malignant tef we will give coated SEMS, which is self expanding metallic stent again these all are potential questions so you should uh, should learn it and okay we will go further and uh, the prognosis we there is a, a poor prognosis it doesn't matter how much uh, how well is the treatment how well is the surgery done but it always it will always have a poor prognosis and the long-term survival after ESO forget me depends upon the depth of the invasion which is the T location of the esophageal carcinoma and the number of lymph node involvement which is uh, N so it basically depends upon T and NM now I would like to uh, discuss about uh, 
some surgical techniques that which can be used for treatment uh, it includes Ivor Lewis esophagotomy technique approach or McQue McEwen esophagotomy approach or transhital esophagotomy esophagotomy uh, in Ivor Lewis approach it is the most commonly used surgical approach we do a subtotal esophagotomy for it is done for carcinoma esophagus which is present in the middle or the lower third of the esophagus this is a two stage esophagotomy the esophageal tumor is removed through laparotomy and then a right thoracotomy the is done the esophagogastric anastomosis is located in the upper chest uh, what the point to remember here it is that the main cause of mortality in I will Lewis operation is anastomotic leak which causes mediastinitis in a McQueen esophagotomy it is a three-stage approach in which we first do laparotomy then thoracotomy then a neck incision and we do a complete esophagotomy and then we place a gastric tube and the third one is the trans hiatal esophagotomy it is a two-step procedure we do a laparotomy then a neck incision and no thoracotomy is done so there are less complication but there are more chances of anastomotic leak and bleeding though it is less in comparison to the Ivor Lewis esophagotomy now uh, we will discuss some questions some important questions that can be asked in the question in the uh, exam first um, adenocarcinoma of esophagus uh, develops in paratesophagus long-standing ecclesia corrosive stricture alcohol abuse so uh, what do you think what is the answer the adenocarcinoma it develops in the paratesophagus whereas these three they are associated with squamous cell carcinoma now the second question what is the most common site of squamous cell carcinoma esophagus we all know that we have read it so many times that it is the middle third of the esophagus now the third question what is true about carcinoma esophagus whether it is the most common site is the middle third adenocarcinoma is a common variety carcinoma develop at the ecclesia segment smoking is a risk factor smoking is a risk factor endoscopy is the investigation of choice what do you think what is true about carcinoma esophagus uh, okay I'll tell you that uh, the correct answer is most common in middle third and also this option is also correct so it is a multi correct option the adenocarcinoma is a common variety it is also correct Adenocarcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma are two common types of esophageal carcinoma. The rare types of esophageal malignancy it include undifferentiated carcinoma, carcinoid, malignant neoplasma, lymphoma, and sarcoma. Now, this option is also correct. Smoking is a risk factor, we know that. Endoscopy is the investigation of choice, we also know that. The only false statement in this question is carcinoma develops at Ecclesia segment. The carcinoma does not develop at Ecclesia segment. The Ecclesia segment refers to the non-relaxing 
lower esophageal sphincter and ecclesia uh, it means that failure to relax the carcinoma develops in the dilated portion of the esophagus and not the contracted portion now the fourth question the T staging of esophages is best done using which modality it is the esophage endoscopic guided ultrasound CT MRI or PET okay I'll give the answer it is the endoscopic guided ultrasound we I have already discussed it before that ultra uh, endoscopic guided ultrasound it is the uh, investigation of modality for T staging and for lymph node metastasis and now we go for the fifth question it says that all of the fol following are the surgical options in management of esophageal carcinoma except except okay I'll give the answer it is the D option I've already discussed that I will Lewis McQueen transhital approach are used for the surgical surgical it is these three are surgical approach to carcinoma esophagus in case of T1 T2 stages now the question 6 an esophageal carcinoma if it is limited to the lower third of the esophagus which is the approach of choice okay I will give the answer it is the Ivor Lewis approach Okay, thank you for listening. Please don't forget to subscribe.